Alright, what is going on guys? Rudolanel here, coming back at you with another Python tutorial, and we're still checking out Hashlib. Now, Hashlib has been pretty nice to us so far. We've been able to make some, uh, some nice hashes with Hashlib, and we've been hashing some stuff, and that has been... <laughs> that was a bad pun. I'm sorry, I, I, I think I went overboard with that one. But alright, we're, we're playing with Hashlib. We've can, got it imported inside idle. It's easy enough to work with. We've been checking out the MD5 algorithm in the last one, and now we're going to move on to the SHA1. Now, these are all pretty similar, of course, because they are hashes. You cannot revert, you cannot revert sorry, the data that you pass into it back to its original state. You have what you had initially, but you don't have what it was <clears throat> anyway. You can't take that string and just use a function on it that will re resort it back to what it was initially. So, uh, <clears throat> returns a hash object optionally initialized with a string. You guys can't really see that with a string option, but I'm not lying to you. <laughs> In every single uh, constructor uh, initialization or sort of like the creation of objects that you make with Hashlib, you do have the option to pass in the string that you'd be working with right here. So if I were to type in encrypt this, just like we did with the MD5 one, now we have that object. And I'm actually going to set that as an, into an object that we can work with. So I'm going to say SHA1. I think I'll just call it S to make things really easy and pretty simple for us. So S is the Hashlib SHA1 object. <clears throat> and we have the exact same functions and variables that we had with our MD5 uh, object. So this is kind of one of the things that uh, Hashlib really likes to boast about. It actually, the module implements a common interface to many different secure hash and message digest algorithms. And that's all it is. Seriously, seriously. It's a common interface. Now it says comment. I'm sorry, common, it means that every single one of these algorithms that you work with between SHA1, SHA224, yada yada yada, and MD5, they all have the same functions that you're going to be working with. But keep in mind, you're only doing one thing, you're only hashing it. So the algorithm you use kind of really depends on whatever it is that you're working with, the scenario that you're in, but that's all there is to it. Okay, let's actually use hex digest anyway on S, and we get very clearly this mass of garbage, and that is our hex, that is our hash. There it is for us. We can work with that, and we can store it in a text file, whatever we need to do with it. That is encrypt this, obviously hashed with the SHA1 algorithm. So, there it is. That's all there is to it. You can tell that it's kind of different and kind of, I think, a little bit longer than what we would see with an MD5 one. Let's actually do m hashlib, hashlib right down there, MD5. And we can type in encrypt this, just like we had right up there. Now, m, hex digit, hex, sorry, hex digest, will have a different string, but it's the exact same string going into it. So, you can tell that there are some advantages in, like, the length of the value that you get back, especially determining on how much crap you actually throw into that the encryption or hashing process. So let's seriously try it. If I were to do s equals uh, hashlib sha1, and let's actually make a whole bunch of jumbled mess. <laughs> let's actually just make a bunch of characters that really don't mean anything. And let's copy and paste over and over again, keep all the same crap that we're working with, and it's going to be something huge and absolutely disgusting. But <clears throat> it's going to encrypt it for us. We can do ha s hex digest, and let's see what our outcome actually is. That. Okay, that's, that's simple enough. I mean, it's, it's easy, it's just converted into what it was prior, but maybe if we didn't repeat it, maybe if we had some different syntax, maybe if it was a complete file. Actually, let's do something crazy. You know what? Let's take the entirety of this web page and save it. Save it as hashlib.html. There it is. Now, if I were to open up hashlib.html, I'll get it open in, like, uh, Bluefish or something. Not in Firefox again. That's just dumb. Don't do that to me. <laughs> I'll open it in a containing folder. Uh, all the stuff. <clears throat> Hashlib.html. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open it with Bluefish, one of my text editors. And I've got this crazy massive code, okay? So I'm going to copy it. I'm going to throw it into my idle interpreter. And actually set it to be the string that we're going to work with here. And I'm actually going to have it be a literal string, because it's very likely that we'll have some quotes in there. So if I were to run this, and just paste it right in, <clears throat> if it'll let me, 
Control V. Yep. Now there is some very, very obvious usage of that, um, <clears throat> let's see, that single quotation somewhere. So, oh yeah. Where is it? Huh. Maybe, maybe it's not, maybe it's not. Maybe we can just go ahead and quickly hit enter if I get to the very end of our page, or idle anyway. If I run this, no, there is a problem. And I'm not going to actually take the time to go do this. What we can do... Oh, no, there. I think I see some down there. Yeah, nobody span. <clears throat> so let's let's try a different approach to this. The whole thing about programming, obviously, is problem solving. So why not we do something crazy right now? I'll get Nano open, a text editor that I use in the console, in the shell. We'll paste it all in here. We can just paste very easily. And we've got all this crap, and Nano actually didn't do the greatest job. So, screw Nano, we're all done with you. We're going to use it in Bluefish because I'm improvising and it's tons of fun. <laughs> so here's all our stuff. Oh, it's actually already in. Why don't you just... Why don't, we don't need to put it in a whole other text editor, it's already all over here. Alright. So, file. Actually, in... I'll call it imp. Can equal open up hashlib.html and s can equal hashlib.sha1 and the content that we're going to work with equals imp.read all the crap now s can hex digest everything inside there and it still gets us this tiny little string right here so you guys can see that there is some interesting intricacies, obviously, that's going on when we encrypt and hash, obviously, the text that we're working with. So with SHA-1, when we're doing the same thing, essentially, that we were doing with MD5, we have a different algorithm or a different system of encoding or encrypting or hashing, obviously, the data that we're working with. So that's all that I want to show you in this one. It's a very, very simple, obviously, library because there isn't anything different across all the different algorithms. We're going to examine some of the other ones, though, real, real quickly, but that's all of them that we're going to be looking with. I don't think I'm going to look at every individual one, but we're just about done with this mini-series because it's very, very quick. I've already addressed and practically, practically already showed you all that you need to do with this library. So thank you guys for watching, though. I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you again in the next tutorial.